Okay, so refresh my memory because I've handled, you know, one or two other people today. Uh, yes. So you tried to help me a couple weeks ago and the camera was not doing anything. You could only get it to take gotcha. an image in a third party app. So Rebecca back and forth through Lightburn, then we realized it was the camera. Gotcha. So Rebecca uh, sent me a new camera and my husband put that in. Mm -hmm. And I fussed with trying to do the dot thing, and it kept telling me that I didn't have to do that. And I don't know if it's because I clicked on the W110 camera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I have that? If that's what I did wrong. Um, and well, then I engra did the engraving. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What machine do you have? The Nova 51-130. Okay. So the Nova 51s, we prescribed the W110. The, those those are for the Nova 51 and the Nova 63, uh, and then the 95 yep. is for the 35 and under, and that does look like the right one. So typically, all you do is just select that and then move on to the next part, and you're done. Okay. And now you can so go to align I the camera. Did move on. Okay. I did that, and it. Can you? Are you in my computer or no? I I can see the preview, and we uh, we need to do a few things. Your scale, you didn't change the scale, okay. so that's an eight by eight image. And the bigger you can get that thing on that piece of wood, the better, because it'll give you more accuracy. Okay. That's so where I was stuck. that's what I thought I needed to be in the corners of the whole board, correct? Right. And did the board need to be centered on the honeycomb bed? Well, the board looks perfectly located. This is fine for what we're going to do. Uh, okay. You may want to flip it over so we have a clean side to project that new scan on there, let that me, new image. Let me grab a new piece to this one. I burned it. Through. And we could make that one, you know, the you could use that one. We could make the scale big enough where, oh, you know, if you want to conserve material, right. we can scale it where that other stuff won't matter. It won't? Let me just get a new one. I need less distractions if possible. Do you want the clips on there? There's a, there's a little bit of a warp here. Um, Do you want? It, 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 is it laying? I mean, it, how is it? Is it pretty flat? I mean, you know, or does it have? It's pretty it, flat, it, but I I can put these guys in the corners to okay. does that help. That'll be that'll be perfect. I'm gonna grab the two more. I don't have all kinds of people in my business back there. See thunders now. Woohoo! <laughs> They're awesome They're machines. Everything I'm posting. Yeah. It is. Okay. Okay, so now you're going. Now it's important to autofocus, uh, so and that okay. mean, that means it's important to have laser. the stock two-inch head in and make sure that it's all the way up to the stop ring, you know, until it won't go up any further, you know, in case you've been manually focusing, uh, you'll want to push the head back up into its stop position. Okay, it is. And um, <clears throat> then you can autofocus, and that should get us about six millimeters from the surface. So hit escape and menu. Mm -hmm. hit, yeah, hit the menu key and then scroll down to autofocus okay. and yep. then hit enter. Enter. Okay. And when it's possible, That's it's good done. to have the head out of the way of the material just in case there's something, you know, how your head is over the material while it's doing, which in a case like this, okay. you know, it's not a huge deal. And normally there's no problem, but that's an extra precaution just in case if you're doing an odd object okay. or it's, you know, got some contour to it or something like that okay so now that we're auto focused and the reason that's important is because the distance uh from the camera is just as important as the distance from the laser beam the the nozzle so okay. uh if you change the distance from the surface of the material that the camera sees to the to the camera lens it changes the scale of your object and it throws it out of alignment so as long as you use auto focus okay. while you're using the camera you'll be in good shape 
<clears throat> and then, okay. you know, if you're cutting something thick, you can focus a piece of half inch or three quarter material on there. And then after you get it there, just don't move it again. And then you can manually focus and move your nozzle closer if you want to focus into the material. You see what I mean? Okay. And it, and, it, and yeah. the material will still be in the same location. It'll be in that focal plane. So, all right. Okay. Um, so, but I don't want to do that until I get external of this, right? Um, I don't want to cut something that thick yet, do well, I? Well, you can. It, you know, it, it, it might have a little char on it. You might have to make two passes. I mean, it'll do it. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. What we're going to do is capture an image of this just like it is because we've got the material in place. And we don't have to set a thickness here because we're not accounting for that. And uh, you've got a 100 watt machine. 130. A 130. So, you know, we could go like 400. Uh, and let's kick that power down to like 20, maybe 25. Okay. That might, I don't know, that might be a little hot. I, I haven't run a 130 watt tube very much. I usually run lower wattage machines. So uh, okay. I'm going to at least double the scale and get it 16 by 16. Uh, the reason that's 8x8 is this software also works on a K40 and it's got about the same work area as a sheet of paper. So uh, okay. that, that's why that one is that. But what you want to do is get this test target, this sample image, as large as you can uh, on, the, you know, on the bed or on your material. And use the biggest piece of material you know, that's feasible and you have a, a good size. Okay. Now I'm going to have to frame this so that it will show up on the work area and I want to make sure that all your hands and feet are inside the ride and you don't yeah. have any else, anything else on the bed. So no. whenever you give me the word, I'll manually control it. You're good. Okay. All right. So you can see that it uh, put that on the work area and we could probably go a little yeah. bigger. Let me go back over to your camera bigger. view. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have to pull it back. Well, I'll have to go back to get, so let's do it about what, 225? And I'll just frame it and you can visualize it better and uh, just let me know and I'll reframe it and it'll re, you know, do it on the thing. You ready? Okay. Okay, yeah. here we go. And, and of course there's a, you know, diminishing returns here. You don't, you know, one, you don't have to go so big that you're just right at the very extents of the bed. You know, we don't have to any, you know, this is a okay. good size. Um, but we can keep going a little larger if you want and make the best use of the space. So you just tell me how much we need okay. to go. We could, we can go larger. Okay. So let's try uh, 275. Okay. Here we go. Does that look? Yeah, that's good. That okay. looks good. We still have about six inches on the edges, but oh, okay. That's now, still really big. Now I have another. Uh, I have another session at three thirty that's already scheduled. So I'm going to try to get in touch with them and at least mm -hmm. maintain. But let's. Uh, I'm going to try to run through. So if you would close the lid on your machine and make sure your chiller is on and the laser power switch underneath the main power switch, um, and all that good stuff. Um, Everything's ready for you. Okay, and this is just going to be engraving, but I think I'm going to turn the air assist on. Do you, you just have the stock air pump, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we'll leave it. it. It should be fine as long as you've got a, just at least a little bit of air coming out of that low stage will be good. So uh, whenever you give the okay. word, uh, I'm going to fire your machine up and, and you know, output this job. Here Go we ahead. And I got to remember 275. So, okay, now I've got a preview of what's going on. And while it's doing that, I'm going to see if I can get uh, necessarily so okay. that you can run production with it open. Um, but yes, it is possible. And the way that board works, you just push a little button on the board and it disables all the interlocks on the doors uh, until you either push the button again or until you turn the power off and start the machine back up again. Then it resets so that that safety feature will be okay. re enabled. I've had Robert at my house twice already for training. Gotcha. So that's helped a ton. It sure is. Well, yeah. you had to help him. I had a glitch in my main control panel. Uh -huh. You helped him. Oh, yeah, I remember. Reset something because my mm -hmm. origins were wonky. Yeah. Sure, sure. I remember. I was like, I thought, I'm just not smart enough for this thing. And Robert was like, <laughs> it's not you. I was like, oh. <laughs> 
he's an amazing guy. Yeah. Very patient. Well, I mean, these things, I mean, you know, you, I, no one's born knowing what one of these things are. You know, it, it lands in your front yard and it looks like an alien spacecraft. You know, how do you even yes. open this thing up and push a button? Uh -huh. But you'd be surprised how many people just uh, drive it like they stole it and they just yank it out of the box and start sticking stuff together and hope it they works. Sure do. And I read that on yeah. Facebook and I'm like, Lord, yeah. how do these people get it? Yeah. Well, Thunder's put a lot of effort into trying to make this thing as plug and play as possible and ready to run out of the box. And I think they've done a pretty spectacular well, I, job of yeah. it. So. They've done excellent. It's definitely me not being tech savvy. Okay, that prop. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and raise the lid whenever you like, and uh, we'll get the camera Good. back up in the position. Okay. Alrighty. So here's the fun part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Toggle. We'll, we'll go next. Whoops. I didn't capture the image, did I? That would help. There we go. All right. Now we'll go next. Here we go. So we're going to just zoom in over here. I think I'm zooming in. Yep. I'm the one. Um, you may want to drive. I'm having some latency well, in, the okay. in my in my display right here, refreshing. Right? So, yeah, just double click to make the mark and get it as close as you can. And if you mess up, you can just click undo last. Or you can double click somewhere way outside and then go back. But, yeah, just get them as close as you can in that order. My scroll was messed up through this remote session. And then once you're satisfied with that it, click. Good to you? Um, it looks good to me. Yeah. Now, you, are you zooming into them okay. and checking them too? Because I wasn't seeing the zoom action in my remote. But uh, I, It was zoomed in, but not like. Okay. Hang on. Let me just go back for just a second. Let me see if I can get. Okay. See if I can get control again. See, that's as far as I can zoom. Oh, wait. Here it goes. My oh okay, my display is refreshing very slowly. Okay, so you did zoom in. Well, let, I want to take a look at them if I can get in here a little closer. For some reason, can you can you use your scroll mouse and hover over the image and zoom in to that first marker a little closer? Or let's just try the buttons. Hang on, here we go. We'll just use the zoom in, zoom out buttons there. Okay, see you're off here. So let's oh, zoom yeah, in. Oh yeah, we are. Okay. Zoom in a little closer. I don't know what was up with the zoom, but I'm glad uh, Oz Way thought off. about putting the buttons there. That's pretty cool. So let's just undo last and go back to marker one, and we'll just start over. And then we can get a little closer. See, we can. That's still off. So undo last. See if you can get a better shot at it since you're on the host computer. There you go. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Now after you after that you can you don't have to even unzoom if you kinda guess. You can just pull over here too and I'll let you drive again. That looks good. Now, how are you getting down? That's what I'm not Down? For moving to, oh, for me to get to number three. How do I just just hold on to the image and drag it around? But hang on just a second. Let me zoom into this one just a little. Um, that one, yeah, yeah, okay, Th they, yeah, that one looks good. But yeah, you can you can just click the image and hold on to it and pull it. See. And well, your your commands may be a little different since you're on a Mac. So I mean that may be part of it. Let me just zoom back out, and we'll, I'll pull I'll pull you in the right direction, then I'll let you drive again. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there's my other guy j just chimed in. Well, because um, there has to be something with my zoom on Lightburn because I'm struggling with when I'm designing and trying to get in the full area. Okay, can you see the three? Uh, I can. Yep, that looks good. And uh, I'll drag you over to the four. And I can get you zoomed in a little tighter if you want. Perfect. There. Awesome. Okay. All right, so we're going to hit next. And now we're finished. And now you're calibrated. And if you update your overlay, there it is. And you can unfade it so you can see it a little better. So now what you see is okay. what you get. Now, do something for me. And I have to get on this other session. He finally, he's on here, uh, which yeah, is perfect yeah. timing. Okay. Um, 
you can right click over this preview image here and you want to go to export camera settings and you want to save that somewhere I don't care where but just save it and that way if the settings get out of whack as long as you haven't moved the camera or the position of the lid hasn't changed or something like that you can just pull these settings back in or if you have another computer that you want to run Lightburn from you can import these settings into that computer and your camera will be set up in that instance of Lightburn as well oh awesome okay all right all right thank you so much i appreciate it very much okay not a problem